Hello friends, if you have the studio version of DaVinci Resolve, you are in luck because you have the depth map. And in this video we go into some of the basic functions of the depth map before we go into some more fun stuff in later tutorials. So let's start. I prepared something here, an image with this lovely lady. It's just a still image. Then I have a forest below it and I have a uh, for color gradient. You will see in a moment why I chose those backgrounds. Forest will be disabled for now. Okay, let's go ahead. We click on the effects library, open FX and here we find, oh what a coincidence, it's a depth map. Um, if you can't find it, just search, search for it and you will find it. Given you have the studio version, of course. Drop it on your footage and then you will immediately see that you have the depth map. The uh, brightest parts that are the parts of the image that are closest to the camera and the darkest parts are that the parts that are further away. So the darker, the further away, the brighter, the closer to the camera. You will see when I now disable the depth map preview that you already see the background of the four gradients shining through. Let's enable it again. And what we can do now here is in the resulting map adjustments, we can adjust the map levels and then you see that the black levels are labeled as far limit and the white levels are at near limit. And the gamma, that's the fade between the both of them. If we go back and disable our preview, we can see what the gamma is actually doing. It fades between the closest and the further away parts of the image. And when we go and play a bit with the far limit, you will see that it heightens the black levels and makes things entirely disappear that are further away. And it makes, if I go to the near limits, go to the right, I make them less transparent. And when I'm going now, you see that it makes the foreground subject less transparent. Again, you can adjust it the contrast, so to say, between the far and the near limit with the gamma. We can go a step further and go to the isolation. I activate the depth map preview again. And then you see that it's a way harsher what's going on here. If you go about 50% to the left of the target depth, you will see that it actually reverses the selection. And you could almost say that it's a bit like moving a focal plane through the image. You can here have the softness. I turn it off again, the preview. And as isolation says, yes, you see, you can isolate your subject a little bit better. And this is why I want to go to another background. So let's click on the other background, hit D to activate it. And then we go again back to our main image to effects and go back into the inspector to the depth map properties where we can go into the post-processing, just hitting post-process does already a very good job. As you can see on the, if I zoom in here a bit, you can see if I activate, deactivate it, that it already makes the fringes of the image much better. You can experiment with the post filter. 
you will see that if you go too far it lets a lot of the background through at the edges of the image which you probably don't want you can contract and expand the edges you know that from if you if you ever did some masking in for example fusion you will be familiar with it that's exactly the same thing you can here fine tune the edges give them a little bit of a blur i think in this image it does a really good job i should go a little bit to the left so you get the idea now you have a overview of how the basic functions of the dead mat are and in the next videos we can have a little bit more fun with it thanks for watching so far and have fun with the next videos in that playlist